Fortnite just added the solo victory cups and it's the best chance you've ever had to make earnings in Fortnite. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Before you can make money in the finals, we need to first make sure you qualify. So for today's video, we're gonna be breaking down a win from three times FNCS champion and winner of the first NAE solo cup round one, Muzz. I'm gonna cover some of the most important things Muzz does and what you need to be doing to make sure you consistently get high point games in the qualifiers. Let's start off with drop spot. Muzz is dropping at Shattered Slabs, a drop spot that many would consider to be quite weak, but it's how he plays his early game, making sure he gains every single advantage that turns this average spot into a very strong start. Firstly, he is prioritizing Oathbound Chests. These have the highest spawn rate of any chest at 70%, and not only that, have the most important item in the game right now, the Shockwave Hammer. You'll notice here that Muzz actually doesn't get a hammer, which means he needs to find one. There's almost no point consistently playing out solo games if you do not have a hammer. It is honestly a necessity in the current meta. For this reason, I would suggest also dropping areas with high amounts of oathbound chests. If you don't, then you'll need to play more aggressive in the early game to secure someone else's. Muzz spends his early game maximizing easily farmed wood and brick such as pallets and large stones, but especially focuses on getting any metal he possibly can. While the chapter 4 map severely lacks metal, with good drop spot knowledge you will be surprised at how much is lying around if you look for it. Next, Muzz focuses on the capture point, and this is for several key reasons. Gold, loot, and information. Let's start off talking about gold. For the entirety of chapter 3, gold was basically useless in competitive. But now with augments and the ability to re-roll them for only 100 gold, once again it is very important you maximize gold. Muzz actually manages to acquire over 300 gold this game, allowing him to re-roll his augments four times, including the first free re-roll. This is incredibly strong, as a hammer combined with forecast is one of the most overpowered combinations you can have. Secondly, you gain loot. This is very self-explanatory. The capture points drop several high rarity guns and lots of meds that you can carry or save to come back after your early fights to be completely topped up on health and shield. Thirdly, and arguably most important, we have information. As I already touched on, Muzz doesn't have a hammer, which means he now needs to get one. The ability to see all enemies around you and their exact location is extremely strong. You can now properly plan a way to single out an opponent for an easy 1v1, not risking being pushed by a third party on spawn. Muzz does just this and because of it he is able to secure a hammer and now has his win condition for the game. I would say this was a very successful early game. Muzz has good meds, a hammer and functional weapons. Let's transition into mid game. The first mid game fight I want to show you is incredibly specific for one reason. Muzz doesn't win it. I know that sounds crazy, Ozzy, why are you highlighting a fight that Muzz doesn't even win? It's because I want to show you that a three times FNCS champion and one of the best fighters in the world still doesn't take every fight. He attempts to fight this opponent before realizing they are playing incredibly defensive, have high ground and could potentially be more difficult than he originally thought. He then uses his hammer to quickly and safely disengage. This is one of the most important skills you can possibly learn and one that will massively improve your consistency at qualifying. Learn when and when not to take a fight. Later on, I'll highlight how to identify a weak or bad player to take an aggressive fight with, but if you encounter a player who is clearly good, especially in early lobbies, then don't be afraid to disengage. Sometimes even if you win the fight, the material time and meds spent into it made the single elimination point no longer worth it. In the current format, each elimination is only one point and a win is 30. Don't throw your whole game for one single fight. As for zone positioning for second and third zone, it is very simple. Base up in hard material, metal or brick, as close as you can to center zone. I could go into great detail about positioning on dead side and finding natural high ground, but honestly, with the addition of hammers and forecast, this just doesn't matter. The majority of players know where zone is going to go, and if they don't, they can get there in the blink of an eye. Don't overthink it. Give yourself the best chance of pulling next zone and put yourself in a defensible, safe position. Once you're in this position, don't just sit there doing nothing. These are qualifiers. Each elimination is one point and you need all you can get. Muzz uses this time to take safe shots at opponents until he eventually cracks one, signaling he has an easy target. He uses his hammer to jump on them and quickly finish the fight. 
Muzz is extremely good at the hammer drop trick, but even without this, if you have good box fighting mechanics, you can easily close out this fight quickly and safely. Just be aware of how many players are around you and their positioning to make sure your aggressive push doesn't leave you being focused or third party. This is now an example of identifying a weak or bad player for a free elimination. Someone hiding in the roof of a building is usually a good indicator of a scared opponent. Also, due to the fact they are inside a fully built structure, it means third parties and players shooting in will have a much harder time putting pressure on you. Another way to identify an easy elimination is any player boxed up early in wood. Any good player will always be boxed up in hard mats like brick or metal, like I just told you guys to do. Now, we are approaching endgame and positioning becomes slightly different. In fourth zone, you do not want to go to center. We know fifth zone is coming and that is our first half-half zone, meaning it will be half in the existing zone and half in storm. That means if you go center, you are guaranteeing that you don't pull zone. With hammers, even if you don't pull zone, now you can easily make the rotate and have a chance to save material and get high ground if you do pull fifth zone. In this game, you'll notice that Muzz doesn't pull zone, but he waits for other players to start rotating first to make sure he is not the only one moving and he'll end up getting targeted. You don't want to go so early that anyone already in zone can focus you and you don't want to go so late that everyone else has already moved and based up and again you are now the only one moving. When on rotating zones, make sure you are almost always building multiple boxes. With the hammer, you do not want to be trying to save every single build because more likely than not, your box will be broken through and you'll have to rebuild anyway. You'll see here Muzz has a second box that he drops back into to now catch this player off guard and he has a defensible position to play out of. He quickly eliminates this opponent, but if this turned out into a long drawn out fight and he didn't already have a box, it would be much, much riskier. As for which layer to play endgame, it is always a difficult topic, but in chapter 4, I recommend staying on high layers so you can more easily and effectively hammer without risking breaking blindly through tarps on low ground and potentially being boxed. This doesn't mean sitting on high ground, the highest layer, because that is going to be fought over a lot. You just want to make sure that you are using the hammer on rotating zones more like the grappler and less like a battering ram to use breaking through builds. Try and go above and over the builds, not through them. There are going to be a lot of chances for you to take high ground in the current meta, as you have a weapon that can instantly break you through their layer and fight them. But remember, most other players in lobby can now do this to you as well. Avoid taking high ground for as long as you can. It is still a very strong position to play from, but unless you are very experienced in end games and have full confidence to fight off everyone going for it, I recommend playing mid ground layers until you're about top 5 or top 10. There are also more easy eliminations in mid ground if you position properly. You will notice this game, Muzz actually wins the game from mid ground rather than high ground, and this is not unusual in chapter 4. With hammers giving you a lot of movement vertically, sometimes the ability to choose when to fight the final 1v1 is actually better from low ground. You can play an angle that catches your opponent off guard rather than just hammering straight up from beneath them. Remember, the Thunder Shotgun does incredibly good damage even when 5 to 10 boxes away, so don't be afraid to take shots at a distance. Now that you've obviously qualified for the finals from watching my video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for the upcoming video I'm going to post about how to play the finals, because the format is very different and you have to play very differently. I didn't want to combine the two into one video, I wanted to put in a separate video, so if you like this one and helped you, make sure you chuck a like on it, let me know in the comments any topics you want me to go into more depth on, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Video, and I'll see you in the next one.